Arriving in Copenhagen it can be a little bit overwhelming and confusing trying to figure out the metro system. How do you get to where you need to get to? What tickets do you buy? Do you buy a city pass? Do you buy a single ticket? Do you get something on the app or the Copenhagen card? There's so many choices, there's so many things and when you come in and it's crowded like this you have really little time and you're kind of confused and maybe you won't make the best decision for yourself as far as cost and, and efficiency as a tourist. So in this video I'm going to try and help you with this, trying to tell you the options you have and what I feel is the best for you as a tourist coming for a few days. Come out of the uh, departure hall, what you need to do is you need to walk straight ahead and if you're looking for train tickets you get them here where these red signs are, but they say DSB, and you can also buy single tickets for the metro here, as well at any of these red machines. When you get here from the airport, you'll be coming in here, and the easiest way to get into the center is just to take this yellow line and come all the way in, which is the M2. Come all the way in, if you're going to the center, either Congress Nutov, Norport, or um, Christianshaven. A little tip. If those uh, ticket machines in the departure hall are really crowded, there's two or three up here, which uh, aren't generally as crowded. So we're here today at the Marmarkirken metro station, and this is where I'm going to start off this video on how to utilize the Copenhagen metro system. Small but efficient and effective for tourists. It's really a good way to get around most of the tourist spots. I don't know whether you can see that. Can you see, you see that? Yeah, you can. It composes of a ring and three lines that basically go out to the suburbs of Copenhagen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and tell you as a tourist what's best for you and what you should consider when you're buying tickets or a pass and also how to use the metro system in general. Uh, I hope this helps and together with my other videos on Copenhagen I hope it helps you as a tourist to navigate and have a good time here in the short time that you do have. So let's get downstairs and let's start this off. Actually no, first let's get a ticket from the ticket machine. These are the two types of machines you get on the Copenhagen Metro and I just wanted to show you the difference between these. This is a ticket machine where you can just buy paper tickets. Basically you have an English option, I don't know whether you can see that, but if you do that you can buy tickets from here to the city center, the airport, day tickets, other zones, bicycle supplements, etc. And you basically just go through, choose what you want, if you want additional tickets, this thing and then you just pay and here you can pay by card by contactless by card or by cash in a lot of the places you can also download the app and i'll show you how to do that as well right so before we go any further i'm going to show you guys how to get the dot travel app and i'm or the dot ticket app and i'm also going to show you guys how to use that a little bit and which options are most going to be used by you as a tourist so let's get into the play store and on the iphone you have the equivalent you type in dot ticket or transport and it'll come up with this app which is the one you want you see what the icon looks like i already have it installed so i'm just going to go over to it once you get there you have a number of op options to buy tickets you have the option to buy a ticket for a number of zones and that ticket is valid i think for an hour or an hour and a half <clears throat> i'll put the actual number of hours that is valid for down at the bottom in the description but that's valid only for a set period of time and for a number of zones then you can buy a single ticket and that's from location to location and the commuter card and the commute 20 is if you're commuting on a regular basis so you guys won't need those two the city pass is the other one that's interesting for you and that's going to give you a number of hours either 24 48 72 etc so one two three days up to 120 hours it's valid immediately you purchase it so it starts off at the time you purchase it and then goes on for that number of hours so be aware of that and then you can add um, uh, metro tickets uh, and you can do other stuff on this the other two ones sorry not metro tickets bicycle tickets the other two on on this you won't be that interested in so let's go first and look at the number of zones so when you look at the number of zones uh, the map um, goes in there and you can see where it's valid for, right? And you can see where you are. Uh, but what I'd recommend if you're a tourist and you wanna get uh, the number of zones ticket coming from the airport is you'd need the three zones, 
which includes Castrop, which is where the airport is. And then you just add the number of adults you want, the number of children you want, and you would then accept the terms and conditions and you would go in to buy the ticket, at which time you can add your card or, and you can pay. And then you can continue to use the card on a regular basis, uh, depending on <clears throat> whether you're using single tickets, city pass, etc. you just use that same card. Now, if you don't want to do the number of zones, uh, and what I'd recommend is if you're not traveling, going to be traveling that much by metro or public transport in that first number of hours, uh, probably don't do that. The cheaper option would just be to either buy a city pass, depending on what time you come in, or a ticket. Now, if you're buying a location to location ticket, you would uh, put in the two locations where you start from. So CPH Lufthaven is the airport. And if you're heading into, for example, Norport, uh, you'd put in Hong Kong and Newtoff, let's say, you just type it in and then it gives you options. And then it tells you uh, what, where and what, shows you the number of zones, gives you the ticket price, and then you just select the route and then you go in, do the same thing, select how many tickets you want and accept the terms and then go to buy the ticket again. Right? So that's a location to location and that's one single ticket basically that you buy just to go from one point to another point. Now, um, the next one which I'd say that you would use is the City Pass, and that's going to be if you're, and as it says here, be, be aware it is valid as soon as you purchase it, so don't purchase it the previous night. Purchase it uh, in the morning that you're going to use it or at the point that you want to start using it. Now, the one that you'll probably use is the City Pass Small, and that covers all of the center, including the airport. So it'll get you to and from the airport, and it'll get you into the center of Copenhagen where you'll most likely be touring. And this covers metro, water bus, um, the buses, etc. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of public transport, this is probably the one that you'd want to use. You can use it for a number of hours, 24, 48, etc., up to 120 hours. And you then add the number of people again, accept, and buy again with the same thing. So it's the same process, just uh, depending on what you want. Now, what I will say is if you're doing more than 120 hours, my advice would be to get the Reiche Court card, the other card I showed you previously, and charge that up as you go. Because even though you pay for the card at the beginning, it actually has a cheaper uh, per trip cost than any of these others. So this small city pass, uh, if you look at the per trip cost, unless you're using it quite heavily, the per trip cost is quite heavy. And I'll go through that later on in the video. Also for the single tickets, whether it's a paper ticket or on the app, the per trip cost actually is more than if you have a Reicher Court card. Okay, so that's a lowdown on how to use this app. And later on in the video, I'll go through and explain what I think is the best option for you, depending on what you're going to do in Copenhagen. Other than that, you get these machines and you find these everywhere as well. And these machines, you can actually buy what they call a Reisekort, which is the card where you can charge up and you can charge them up here as well. Again, here you get the option for English and you can just either have it or buy it. You can pay by card, get the Reiser card out of there, and you just go and you um, tap in and you charge up. I'll show you how to do that later. Now, when you have one of these Reiser Cost cards, you need to check in as well. And you check in at these points here, the green ones where it says check in, you just check in, and then you head off to the metro. With the Marmarkirk and Metro Station, one thing you do have to remember is the two different directions are actually on two different levels. So it's not other side of the platform like on, I think on all the other Metro stations here, you gotta go down one lower, depending on what side, what direction you wanna go around the circle. The Marmarkirk and Metro Station is actually one of the coolest, nicest looking Metro stations, especially for photography like this. Platform two for the M4 line to Copenhagen Central Station. When you're checking out, you always have to remember to come to these machines with the red check out and then here and every journey you have to check in and out. If you don't have the Russia Court card and you've just got the app or you've got a paper ticket, then you don't need to check in and out. It's only when you have the card of some sort that you have to do that. Uh, I'm going to go through with you the different types of options you have and what makes most sense for you as a tourist. Let's talk about the Copenhagen card. 
This is a card that gives you access to 89 attractions, I think, so free entrance, plus all the public transport within the Copenhagen and Greater Copenhagen area, so it includes the airport <coughs> for a set period, i.e. 24 hours, 48 hours, 72, up to 120 hours. Now, this card is quite expensive because it also includes 89 uh, entrances, uh, if you can make 89. So it's really difficult to kind of assess whether you're making the most of this or not uh, because it depends on how many things you go and see, what the price of those entrances are and how much you make use of the public transport itself. Now if you go on their online website, you will find a tool that they have where you can enter the places which you're planning to see and then it calculates for you how much you would save over the normal price of admission. Now what it doesn't take into account is how much you'll actually use the card for public transport. That includes metros, buses, trains in the area and the water bus. So you'd need to kind of do an assessment of that to find out whether it's uh, worthwhile for you or not. I've added on the side here here or here. I've added on the side or down there. I've added on the, the uh, screen some price examples and you can find a full list of prices on the website. And when you uh, do get this card, it's actually an app uh, where you buy it and then you can set the date, I believe, where you want to start it and then it's valid from, from that time. So, Copenhagen card wouldn't be my first choice because I don't think for the price that they're asking, I'd be able to make as much use of it as I would uh, with, and I'd be kind of tied to do certain things to make sure that I took, got the most value for the money. My choice would not be this, I think. So the other option you have, and probably the one which I'd least recommend to you, unless you're staying more than 120 hours um, in Copenhagen, so basically long term, is this card, which is the Reiser Court card. I'm gonna put some costs on the screen for you as well but this costs about 80 krona just for the card and then you charge it up based on what tra travel you do and you need to check in and out like I showed you before and then the price of that single journey is taken off. Now the single journey price when you have this card is actually cheaper than either the app or single tickets but it's um, the price of the card that actually makes it prohibitive unless you are staying for a longer period of time. So my recommendation is unless you're staying for a longer period not to get the Rice Accord card. Side note, you can actually buy the Rice Accord card at the machines with the, the machines that are blue, not the other ones. And you can actually purchase it there like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Let's talk about single tickets and single zone tickets or location to location tickets and tickets within a zone. Now, these are valid for one and a half hours, if I remember correctly. And they, you buy them <coughs> depending on where you want to go, location to location, or for the zone you want to travel. They're more expensive than buying a city pass, but if you're only doing a little bit of travel, so maybe just from the airport to the city center and back again, or maybe, what's that? Oh, excuse me, emergency vehicle. Or, um, or just a, one more trip or two more. I think up until the time you are making four trips, uh, single trips, I think it's worthwhile buying single tickets instead of a city pass. Now you buy your single tickets here at this machine and it's got an English thing too and you then select what you want to buy. You can also buy city passes there but for me personally I feel that if you're not going to be using public transport a lot that these single tickets are actually worth it and actually will save you money in the long run. If you're going to be staying a little bit outside of the city center and you're going to be using the metro uh, two, three, four times, the metro buses, etc., two, three, four times a day, then I'd say that you are probably worthwhile getting a city pass or something of that nature. I'm going to add the price for the single tickets and the zone tickets uh, down in the on the screen here so that you have a, a view of that as well and of course these are ticket prices as of the time I'm filming so please do check the internet site for more relevant and more up-to-date ticket prices depending on when you're watching this. Typical Copenhagen day so I thought I'd bring you to the most iconic of Copenhagen landmarks to talk about the city pass which is probably the ticket option or the pass option which I'd most recommend for you as a tourist. Now the city pass and I'd recommend the city pass small because you get different sizes and the city pass small gives you access to 
the zones which include the airport and the city center and that should do you fine as a tourist for a few days. Now it gives you access to all the metro stations near landmarks like this and uh, all the other landmarks that you'd want to see. What it doesn't include is entrances but you can buy it for a period of 24 hours, 48 hours, up to 120 hours and um, if you look at the cost of it if you're doing more than four single trips I'd say that this is the most cost effective for you. Now my option would be actually as a tourist coming in for maybe two three days I'd probably take the city pass to begin with uh, especially if I'm flying in in the night because it's valid for 24 hours from the time you purchase it I'd take the city pass and then I'd use it for 24 hours coming from the airport because it includes the airport getting in if you're coming in in the evening maybe uh, going back out for a drink well, the and then people. maybe um, going out the next day into town if you're not staying in the center of town now what I will say is if you're staying right in the center of town probably you don't need the city pass and probably a single ticket option is the best what you could do also is mix the city pass with single ticket options and that means buying for example the city pass for 24 hours and then on the days you're planning to walk and not travel by public transport that much just get single tickets so that would be my suggestion and my recommendation to you to make the most of the money that you have and use the Copenhagen metro system in the most efficient cost-effective way possible for you as a tourist there you have it before I forget I just want to show you guys where to buy the city pass from you can buy it on the app as well on your mobile phone if you download the app but you can also buy it from these red ticket machines so I'm not sure whether you can see I think it's refocusing yeah okay so from Danish you can switch it to English and then you go to day tickets and then you get city pass small which is the one you want and then you go there and there you go on the Copenhagen metro system it is an honor based system there's no barriers to scan your ticket in and then for it to open up you buy your ticket and they expect you to buy your ticket or have your pass what that means is that if you do get caught there's no leniency it is a 750 krona fine and they do check quite often so make sure you have your ticket or your pass and it's charged up when you've scanned in um, 750 krona is a lot of money in any currency there's also always loads of these people in these yellow jackets ready to help and give information so if you're stuck or if you need to know what to do just find one of these guys with the red with the yellow fluorescent jackets with the m on it a little bit of metro etiquette for you on the metro stations or in the metro stations you find these white markings what those are for is if you're waiting for the metro you wait within the white markings let the people who are getting off the metro get off first and then you get on don't crowd them so that they can't get off if you have mobility issues as well the metros all have elevators and if they're not working they generally have announcements saying they're not working most of the metros though don't have escalators all the way to street level the first part of it is stairs like this always plenty of cycle parking at all of the metros nothing to worry about on that account as far as the Copenhagen metro system is concerned and safety is concerned on the Copenhagen metro what I'd say is it's probably pretty safe uh, you only have to worry about two things I'd say one is pickpockets so petty theft uh, watch your bags watch your pockets uh, especially backpacks um, the other one is uh, ticket scams you get people waiting by the ticket machines especially at the touristy stops like Congress, New Top, Norfolk, etc. They wait by the ticket machines and those will be ticket machines like those. And then they give some sub story that they don't have a way to get home uh, and they've been cold and uh, they don't have money. They'll ask you to buy them a ticket to some far off place which you can buy from those ticket machines. You'll go there and it'll be about five, six hundred krona which they'll ask you for something to contribute towards it in cash and uh, if you refuse then they start to get a little bit uh, aggressive and irate so just avoid them walk away the last final note is on rush hour as you can see now it's pretty empty behind me. Um, but during rush hour the metros get really crowded they get packed um, even though the metros come every two three four five minutes uh, the whole place gets packed so rush hour in the morning rush hour in the afternoon uh, i'd avoid if i was you this is the end of the guide for the Copenhagen metro system. I hope it's been of use for you and I hope you can make use of it as you come to Copenhagen as a tourist. Uh, I thought I'd end it uh, fittingly or not, I'm not sure, but this is the Copenhagen uh, Central train station, as you can see. And I thought I'd end it here and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was useful. 
if you did find it useful and if you did enjoy it, please do give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more of this. There is also, guys, a Metro guarantee. The leaflets I could find are in English, though, so what I'll try and do is I'll try and translate this for you later and put details of the guarantee down in the bottom in the description. 